Hello and welcome to DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. Today you're in for a delightful treat. I am trading places with my <laughs> DEIBJ specialist, Katie Hodgkins. So instead of me asking the questions of the guests, Katie's going to be asking me how my first three years in Arlington Public Schools as a DEIBJ director has been. Katie. Margaret. <laughs> Thank you for carving out the time to be interviewed today. What a privilege for our community to hear a little bit about your story and hear your voice in a different capacity. What's it like to be in that seat? Um, what's it like to be? It's, it's, it's uh, a new adventure every day <laughs> is what I can say. Yeah. Um, there's not the same day. Mm. I think if it was, I'm not sure if um, it would keep me challenged. Yeah. Um, or I'm not sure it would keep me motivated mm. and encouraged. So every mm. day looks very different yeah. than the previous day. Yeah. Um, and you honestly never stop. <laughs> I never stop. <laughs> yeah. I try. I, I try sometimes. Yeah. Um, and as we were slowing down, mm -hmm. as you know, for the school year, we had some slowing very down. big projects yeah. that we were kind of tying a bow on. Mm. Um, the interim MECO director had to step out. Yeah. Um, and so I had to take over. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing that now for the last maybe four weeks. Yeah. Um, so I read back. <laughs> yes, indeed we did. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you've been wearing both of those hats for these last four yeah. weeks, METCO yeah. director, DEIBJ director. Yeah. You were our METCO director for how many years before? Eight years. Eight years before this yeah. role. How are those two roles distinct? Um, they're distinct in the sense of that the MECO director has, there's the, the daily thing, so it's mm. the macro level that you have to think about, but yeah. it's also the micro level, right? Mm. Because you're doing, you want to ensure that the direct services that yeah. the students are needing, or they're getting support from the staff, yeah. um, you know, your transportation, mm. it's family engagement, yeah. it's, you know, oversight of the of the grant. Yeah. It's all of those moving pieces of mm. being a director of the program, mm -hmm. which is slightly different than being the DIBJ director, where yeah. I think we're really um, looking at the strategic plan and mm. how do we infuse this office into the mm. strategic plan is very yeah. kind of different. So we are macro still and we yes. are micro still right but it yes. looks different yeah um, i think also that we are doing more um adult support yes. right and we're looking more at the school culture and climate mm. than the direct services with students so we are yeah. supporting the people that are in front yes. of the students right so that yes. is also where the differences Absolutely. are um being of a meco director and a dibj director yeah um and prior to this, you had a background in social work, is that yes, right? Yes, yes. How have those skills served you in, in these director roles? Um, it serves me well because you have to be a listener. Yeah. So even you, even when somebody's talking, I can listen in between mm. the conversation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you yeah. have to be observant. So mm. um, I am a study of people. Mm. I'm, I'm a study of what's happening in the atmosphere. and. Yes things like that all help mm -hmm. um, with what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what helps me to stay fluid yes. um, as opposed to fix, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Those skills help me to do that. Yeah. But listening, um, being a social worker is, is the number one yeah. skill set and relationship building mm -hmm. is really, really important yeah. in, our, in the work that we do. Yeah. Um, as you know, I was like 80% of our work. I was just going to say, you told me that recently. And at first yeah. I was like, that's a little high. And yeah. then I thought more about it. I was like, no, that's that's yeah. very accurate for yeah. your role. Yeah, you have yeah. to establish those relationships yeah. in order for us to partner trust. and mm -hmm. collaborate and build a trust to yeah. do the work. Yeah. 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 And our work of equity and justice has so many different names across states and districts and organizations. Tell us about the process of creating this department from scratch why you chose DEIBJ as the acronym and what that really means to you. So when I first got this position, it was DEI. Mm. Um, the first year we um, did an equity audit yeah. and within the audit, they included belonging and justice. Oh, interesting. Um, and so when talking to Dr. Holman as, you know, really reviewing yeah. the audit and going through it, mm -hmm. I was like, there is this belonging and justice mm. that we probably should add mm. um, to it. I think. Um, you could add, you know, several other things to it. I, yes. I have colleagues that 
it's it's just a combination of things, right? I yeah. have a colleague that is accessibility. I have a colleague mm. that is educational equity. So it just depends, yeah. Yeah. I think, of what the district is yeah. also looking at in, yeah. in regards to that position. Yeah. Um, I knowing that this was is my third year. I think this position is always is fluid. Mm. Um, what I'm understanding, it's not fixed. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's not in regards to like a principal. Right. I think that's fixed. Um, mm. Principal has to really man manage the building, right? Mm. Facilities, ensure their instructional leaders, right? Mm. But it's fixed in that building, whereas our um, our positions, depending on what's happening that year, can evolve and, mm. and can be very fluid in that way. Yeah. So I feel like we're always adding on yes. to the plate as, a, as opposed to taking off. Well, and I feel that school cultures have to be flexible and adaptive too, right? They're getting new students year through year, new families. There may be shifts in staffing throughout the years, and so that that is an adaptive space as yep. well. And when you've got that bird's eye view of all of the 11 schools in our district coming yep. together, kind of supporting and helping to manage all of those different changes yep. throughout, it's especially yeah. important to have yeah. that lens. Yeah. Um, and do you feel that that addition of belonging and justice, did that shift anything in our work? We know that language matters. I'm just curious. Yeah, language matters. I, yeah. As some may know, it's in our vision statement, yeah. right? Yeah. A sense of belonging, growth, mm -hmm. and joy. Um, I I think, and justice, right? Yeah. I think depending on what's going on in the nation, mm. um, justice is very important. Mm -hmm. um, where I'm landing, and I think where we're landing, yeah. is that belonging is so nuanced. Justice is so nuanced. And sometimes I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, do we need a framework? Mm. You know, I don't want to kind of give it a definition because yeah. then I feel like we'll box ourselves in. Mm. And I'm also thinking like, but what are also some of those guardrails to help yeah. us to really understand when we're talk when Arlington Public Schools is talking about belonging, yeah. what does that really mean yeah. for Arlington Public Schools mm. and our partners, you mm -hmm. know, the students and the families. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Like it's yeah. just so nuanced. I could I could yeah. have a million and one definitions right now from yeah. people when they say belonging or justice. Mm. It does mean something different mm -hmm. to every person. And I feel that sometimes when we focus on that belonging, we sometimes skip over the equity and inclusion piece that needs to really come first or alongside that to make sure right. that everybody right. feels that. Right. And everybody understands the intention behind making space right. for voices that have been historically right. marginalized in our right. community. Margaret, as an African-American Latina leader in a predominantly white district, your identity is very visible in many ways in this space. And uh, you're withstanding daily scrutiny often. <laughs> yep. Roots in racism, yep. roots yep. in sexism, yep. sometimes both. Yep. Um, what pressures do you face and feel that people sometimes can't see? Um, I think they can't see how some of that could affect me mm. on a daily basis. I think they can't see that if I get it on a daily basis, the cuts that I have, mm. Um, and sometimes, some days might be easier than others for me to accept that and handle that. And mm -hmm. other days, it's not mm -hmm. as easy. Um, I mm -hmm. do get upset. I do get angry. I think it's remembering that I am a human being that's walking mm -hmm. in a skin, like you said, that's very yeah. visible. Um, yeah. And that people make assumptions. Mm -hmm. And people think that I it's, it's, it's okay to give me feedback. Mm. Right, and you and I have talked about this. I think I got more feedback than you got mm. feedback this year based on I did because of the skin I walked in. Mm. Um, it made me feel like um, I wasn't intelligent. Mm. You know, it made me feel like I didn't have skill sets. Mm. You know, when some when somebody does that because they feel like, well, yeah. I'm just don't, well, I didn't ask yeah. for that. And um, you know, there are times where I feel like, yeah, I could give somebody mm. feedback like that, but what it like giving the feedback, what am I trying to gain from that? Right. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. so. And those cuts add up. The cuts add up, yeah. and they have added up this year, I yeah. think, more so. I think with you coming on, I think it was more mm. um, than I, I felt like I've experienced in the mm. last two years. Um, so I felt like, you know, I, I was saying to myself, are people comparing, contrasting us? Yeah. You know, mm. and you and I have had that conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in a space where um, 
feedback is hard in education in general and equity work in general because we bring our whole selves into that, right? And as a teacher, we're creating and leading these lessons that we pour ourselves into and it's hard to receive feedback as an equity leader. You're pouring yourself into this work. You're seeing yourself in the folks that you're representing. Um, and that can be hard to hold uh, for other folks and then you're trying to hold that for yourself mm -hmm. too. What do your support networks look like? Um, my family mm -hmm. is a really um, a network that I lean on. Yeah. I think going home every night, as I yeah. call them, my boys, as yes. you know, <laughs> but that includes my husband and my son, yeah. um, is where my safe haven is. Mm -hmm. I can take off yeah. this and be myself mm -hmm. um, and be accepted yeah. into in that space, mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to feel like I have a mask on mm. um, is yeah. one of the things. I think um, I have a prayer life mm. that helps me yeah. a lot. And then I have colleagues. Yes. You know, the, there's one DEI director that, you know, every other day we might be calling each other on the way into work. Yes. Um, or I might be talking to somebody else on the way into work and just kind of like I, you know, I'm going. I've been going through this, and yes. you know, having someone to help you to handle that. I have Absolutely. a coach that I adore, yes. um, that has been helping me for the last uh, three years. So sometimes yeah. I might be like, "Hey, you got a minute?" Mm. Because I feel like I give out so much to others. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I do really need to find those spaces yeah. to pour back into find yourself. where that support system is. Yeah. 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 And as if all of that wasn't enough, Dr. Friedel Thomas, <laughs> you uh, recently got your doctorate degree. Congratulations. I did. How long were you in that program? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Actually, when I started this position. You start so you've been in that program the whole time you've been our DEI mm -hmm. leader in the district. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did that learning and community impact the implementation of our work here? Um, that learning from me I didn't I did not know that it was going to be such a wealth of um, knowledge for mm. me I did not know it was going to be such a supportive community for me because yeah. um, I was in a cohort of 25 amazing yeah. other educational leaders across Massachusetts we're talking from superintendents assistant mm. superintendents principals um, were in this yeah. um, and to be able to choose a topic yeah. that I wanted to research, I think also helped me with my learning. Yeah. I think it helped me to expand my thinking and think about what is the research out there. That's yes. why I was like, when I talk about belonging, I'm talking about the framework, the framework. like what is a framework out there? Right. When we talk about justice, what is a framework out there? Um, and why don't we use a lot more research base mm. Um, mm. that's out there to help us kind of steer where we're going yeah. um, I think sometimes we're getting we're so insular mm. right that if we could really think about what are we talking about have we read articles about mm. it where are we landing on this yeah. who has done the research on this right. what are the gaps things like that has helped me yeah. to grow in that area mm. and I did not know I was such a nerd <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, so yeah, I mean, yeah. I really, I really loved it, even yeah. though it was right a lot of time. Yeah. Um, but it also taught me that I had to say no to a lot of things. Mm. Um, so mm. it also taught me how to say no because I'm yeah. sometimes too much of a yes person. Yeah. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I. Am. But mm. I will overwhelm myself by saying yes a lot. Yeah. Um, so for the last three years in being in this program, and somebody say, can you? And I'm like, no, yeah. I, I can't do that yeah. right now. I need to stay focused on this. Mm -hmm. You know, my family was important to me. Yes. I needed to make sure that I was doing my job to the mm -hmm. best of my ability mm -hmm. and school. And yeah. that's what I needed to stay focused in on. Yeah. yeah. Identifying those priorities is so important for our work because being a department of one and then a department of two and spread across a district, right? There are so many things we would like to do and partner, people we'd like to partner with and yeah. we must stay focused. Yeah. And I felt that data-driven um, mindset and skill set that you're bringing just in this year too, in our empathy interview work, in our residencies, um, grounding us in research, grounding us in best practice, because uh, sometimes we can just kind of take off with a new initiative. Right. And we want that to be embedded right. um, longer term. Yeah. 
Are there other things, I know those are two big projects we've been mm -hmm. working on, things that you're feeling particularly proud of from your three years so far? Um, equity audit. Yep. Hiring okay. another, we hired somebody in, in our department. Yeah. Um, so I yep. wasn't just a director anymore, we are a department. Yeah. Um, I think also I am very proud of, like you said, we did empathy interview training yeah. with you, that you did a lot of that, you spared head, head mm. or that, and we did some residencies, right? Yeah. Just spending a week in schools and just yeah. understanding the culture and climate yeah. of a school and and thinking about how we can support yeah. that school and the Princeton, the principal and mm. the leadership and the students, right, and the teachers, yeah. I think is yeah. like what I'm really proud of. Mm. Um, we, t I think you started doing some coaching. I think I mm -hmm. was doing a little bit, a little bit with that with the leadership, and yeah. I actually did some mediation, right, <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. So it's like, I think we start to, as people know that we're here, that yes. I think what we're doing is expanding. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And so much of what we facilitate and encourage in this work is mindset work, is identity work. What is a belief that you have had that has changed as a result of leading DEI efforts in Arlington? I think a belief that I have and I've always had mm. is that it's okay for you to have your perspective and we mm. might disagree with that perspective but, and it's okay. However, yeah. how do we coexist with one, as, one another in a yeah. respectful way? Mm. I think that's where I'm trying to land. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes that's really hard, and I'm going to say this, I think the students show us how to do it. Yes. And if we just step back and let the students show us how to do it, mm. we as adults can pick that up. Because yeah. um, I saw, you know, two different communities of students come together this year because mm. they wanted to, and they wanted to have conversations, right? Mm. Um, Tell me more about that. So I saw the Jewish community and the Arab community mm. of students, they... They wanted to have these conversations. They were like, we want to have conversations. Yeah. They wanted to um, do a student union, which mm -hmm. they did. They went to the leadership. They yeah. talked to me. They talked to another teacher. We talked mm -hmm. about how do we craft affinity groups for you all, right? Mm -hmm. If things get a little bit like, we just need to take space. Yeah. Um, and I thought the kids were showing us how to do this. Yes. When adults weren't sure. When the adults kids weren't right sure, in. right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that. I think it's okay also that you have emotions and we have mm. feelings and things hurt us to our core. And, yeah. But how do you pause? Mm. How do you yeah. be self-reflective of that mm. pain and that hurt? Mm. But then how do I come back and re-engage with you mm. without bringing all of that so that yes. you and I can have a dialogue, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I might say to you, like, Katie, I, I, you know, maybe next week I can talk to you because mm. right now I'm just trying to get a hold of my own emotions yes. and my own feelings. Mm. And I want to be able to lean into this dialogue mm. with you without bringing all of that with you and that you're feeling that, but we're not, right? You're not hearing my words yeah. anymore. You're just yeah. feeling yeah. Um, my emotions and you're yes. seeing all of that, right? I think to the core, that's where I want us to get, to get at. Mm. We've talked a lot about the necessary overlap between DEIBJ and SEL work in this district. How do you partner with our SEL department and leads? We did a great job with that this year. <laughs> um, Magali Orlando, um, who is the director of SEL mm -hmm. and counseling, um, her and I, one, we wrote a grant together. She came to me. Was that uh, the Healing Center the engagement? Healing, the Healing Center incredible. engagement. Yeah. Um, we partnered with that. Mm -hmm. um, and we also did some PD with her in regards yeah. with the elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm always looking for ways to partner with whoever yeah. in our district to do this work because this work is not siloed. Mm. Mm. We have to partner. We do. We can't work. I mean, I think we come together and we talk about like what, right? What yeah. is it that we need to be doing? How do we support? Mm -hmm. We have to do that work. You yes. and I have to, and we did that last Friday, right? We have yes. to go and hibernate somewhere yeah. and go do that mm -hmm. conversations. And we have to check in with one another, the reflection right? reflection and the vision. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. to know, we, I have to know where you're at. You have yes. to know where I'm at, right? Yeah. Um, and then after that, we have to go back out yes. and then collaborate and do the work. And you're mm -hmm. doing that, right? You're mm -hmm. working 
with the SEL coach and mm. you're looking at, you're doing advisory, you know, mm. you are looking at the advisory curriculum and yeah. you're, you slowly started doing a little bit of coaching, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about yeah. how we can curate um, resources and, yeah. you know, um, PD for yes. what's going on in our district and how do we help to support teachers, right? And we're all, we're both like, oh God, there's only two of us now, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> right, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Margaret, we've talked a little bit about things that you do to kind of fill your cup back up. Are there other things that you do to care for yourself? What's something lately that's been kind of filling your soul as we wrap up this year? Um, really? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit like, but I love going to get my nails done. <laughs> <laughs> Show the nails for today. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. no, I love, like, like that is just, Meditative. I think, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like somebody else is kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I can sit. Mm. I, I might listen to a podcast yeah. that I was listening to. Like, I can just yeah. sit in a chair or, yeah. Um, don't let it be a pan a petty manny kind of <laughs> like month, yeah. you know, and I, that just happened where I can now sit, really sit in a chair and yes. have my feet in some water and, mm -hmm. um, or sometimes I like to go get my feet massage. I didn't realize that. Like I realized that a lot of my stress is in my feet now. Yeah. So, um, when I go get the massage, I feel better. Mm. Um, and now that school is over, <laughs> I'm looking forward to going back to boxing. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Those are good outlets. To yeah. Have. I'm yeah. Glad yeah. That you have them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Margaret, what is a hope that you have for our work moving forward? This year is winding down, but the work continues. It's a journey. It's not a destination. What is a hope that you have for it? Um, I, my hope is that we can keep moving the work. Mm. My hope is that we don't get stalemated. Yeah. Um, that we can help to continue to give a lens mm -hmm. of what we see. Mm -hmm. um, my hope is that we can continue to collaborate. Um, my hope is that we can continue to be creative mm -hmm. in what those resources and ideas are for yeah. our district. Yeah. Um, that's my hope and my hope that people, I think my also hope is that people will have grace for us. Mm -hmm. And just then, as you have grace for yeah people. as we do yeah, this work yeah. just to have grace yeah. of we're trying our best mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't get it right mm. and we're not looking not to get it right and we mm. do and um i always say you get more with honey than with when with vinegar right mm. so when you do want to give feedback what does what does that really feel like and look like yeah. because i think sometimes i can hear it better mm. as opposed to you know it's more of an attack mm. than more of a, hey, a suggestion, yeah. or um, yeah. you might not have known this, but this is what we want you to know kind yeah. of thing. So those, those are my hopes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing Thank that. you. Arlington community, thank you so much for joining us Yay. in this uh, pivoted DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Petal Thomas and Kitty Hodgkins for today. Yeah, you did a great job. You did as well. Look at that. <laughs> we tag teamed it as yes. per usual. But. All right. Anything else to say to the community before we before we depart? For no, I just hope everybody have a great summer and we will be back in September. We'll see you soon, Arlington. Bye. Bye. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.